So properties are statements that are true for any numbers. Please write that. Uh, you don't have to write the rest, just read it to yourself. All right, properties are statements that are true for any number, okay? You got an example here, they say 10 plus 30 and 30 plus 10. They both equal 40. This is what we call commutative property addition. I didn't have you write it down now because you're gonna write it down on the next slide. Okay, commutative property of addition. It says we can change the order of the addition problem. It does not change your answer. Same thing for multiplication. 30 times 10 and 10 times 30. You get three no you get 300 no matter what. This is commutative property of multiplication. Here's what you do need to know about commutative property. Okay, here's how you can memorize and identify commutative property. We're changing the order of the numbers. Right? Commutative is spelled C-O. Change order. Make sense? Use that connection. You see commutative, know the first two letters tell you what you're doing. You're changing the order. All right, this is what you need to write down. This is the definition of community property. Community property is the order in which numbers are added or multiplied that does not change the sum or product. So if you have an addition problem like 6 plus 9, I can change the numbers, and make, change the order, I make it 9 plus 6. Do I change my answer? No, they're still equal to both sides because 6 plus 9 and 9 plus 6 both equal 15. Thank you. So commutative property, change order, says it doesn't matter what order they're in, I can get the same answer. Same with multiplication, 4 times 7 and 7 times 4. I still get what? 28. 28. Thank you. All right, so 4 times 7 and 7 times 4. Gives me the same answer. Doesn't matter how it's ordered. Okay, so that's commutative property. Change order. Okay, any questions? Now, does commutative property work for subtraction? Uh, Can I change the order of a subtraction problem and get the same answer? Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 Right? Can I change the order of a division problem and still get the same answer? No. 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 This only works for multiplication and addition. Really? All right, here's what you need to write down. You need to write down the definition of associative property. Associative property, the order in which numbers are grouped. Okay, when added or multiplied does not change the sum or product. Meaning we can change the grouping, but not change the answer. Community property, we change the order. Associative, we're not changing the order. If you look, 3, 6, and 1, 3, 6, and 1, did I change the order? No. But did I change the grouping? Yeah. Yes. 3 plus 6 and then 6 plus 1. But let's check my answer. 3 plus 6 is... 9, what's 9 plus 1? 10. Ten. 6 plus 1 is? 7. 7 plus 3 is? 10. Did I get the same answer? Yes. So the associative property says I can change the grouping and not change my answer. Same with down here for multiplication. 5 times 9 is 45. 45 times 2 is 90. 9 times 2 is 18. 18 times 5 is? 90. Okay, so I can change the grouping and not change the answer. This is associative. Commutative, it was CO, change order. That's how you memorize commutative. With associative, here's how I recommend you, you memorize it. Associative, think associations. What is a different word for associations? Group, thank you. If you change the association, you're changing your group okay people you associate with is people you group with people you hang out with so if i'm asking you is this being changed if the grouping is being changed you know this is associative property when i say group you know association you know associative okay so commutative co associative association all right we have three more properties to talk about you need to write these down Alright, so then we have these three properties. Additive identity, multiplicative identity, and multiplicative property is zero. Additive identity. 
When zero is added to any number, the sum is the number. The number's not changing. Okay, you know with identity, identity is like who you are. If that's your identity. Additive identity just means you're identifying a number. Okay, you're, you're doing something to it, but yet you're not changing it. Adding zero is the only way you can do something to five, but not change it. When adding... When with multiplicative identity, it's when any number is multiplied by one, the product is the same number. So eight times one is eight. So we're identifying eight. We're not doing anything to eight, even though we're multiplying it by one. We're not changing it. So identity is just identifying a number by not changing it. You're doing something to it, but you're not changing it. Multiplicative property is zero. You should already know this. Anything multiplied by zero is equal to zero. Doesn't matter what number it is, if you multiply it by zero, you get zero. Any questions? Write down these, and I'll leave a space out to the side or below each one where you can name it, write the property name. All right, name the property. So we look at four plus parentheses a plus three, parentheses a plus three plus four. Okay. It's obviously not an identity or property is zero problem. Property. So it has to either be commutative or associative. It obviously has to be additive, right? Can't be location. So am I changing the order or am I changing the grouping? What I always do is look at the order. Is this in the same order? No. It's 4A3 on one side, it's A34 on the other. So what did I change? The order. So what property is that? Commutative. Commutative property of addition. Okay, I abbreviate it. You don't have to write it all out. I would write C-O-M, M, and then put a plus sign because it's commutative property of addition. As long as you understand what property it is. D plus zero equals D. What property is that? It is... Say it. Additive identity. So I would write plus ID or AD ID. Doesn't matter. As long as you and I both know, you're talking about an additive identity. Eight times one equals eight. It is a multiplicative identity. So I would just write M U L T I D. Someone raise your hand. Tell me the last one. Uh, Kyle. Associative. Associative property. Why do you say associative? Because it's grouping. Because what? It's changing the grouping. The grouping is changed. Okay, we are changing the associations of the numbers. So it is associative. A S O C. Uh, and then uh, since it's addition, I'd write this. So A-S-S-O-C plus. Easy enough. Okay, any questions on how to do that? All right, then they're going to give you problems like this. So go ahead and write this down. They're going to ask you to simplify. Simplify means to work out every possible operation. And you're going to have to use these properties you just learned to do this. All right, E is an unknown amount. I don't know how much it is. So if I added 3 to it, do I know how much I have? No. Okay, I still have E plus 3. I can't change it. So what I can do instead is I can add 3 plus 7. I can do that based on what property? Associative. I can change the grouping. So now it's E plus parentheses 3 plus 7. What is 3 plus 7? 10. So I have E plus 10. Is there any more operations I can do? No. E is an unknown amount. I can't do anything to it. So I leave it. This is my answer. So associative property let me change things around, move things around to where now I can work out every possible operation. Same thing for 8 times parentheses 5 times x. Okay? 5 times x, that just looks like this. 5x. But what about 8 times 5? Can I work it out? Yeah. How much is 8 times 5? 
So 40x. I did that by changing the grouping there. So that's my answer. Easy enough. Okay, any questions? All right, here's your homework assignment. There are no three or three complete sentences a day, okay? Uh, but there is one that asks you to explain something. So I need at least a complete sense on that and explaining it. Um, and yes, it is. Uh, also, there's a couple true and false questions on there. It'll say if it's false, give a counterexample. What do you think a counterexample is? It's an example to prove that they're wrong. Okay. It's, it's a true or false question. Like if it said 2 plus 2 is 5. Okay, is that true? Yeah. No. So give me a counterexample. 2 plus 2 is 4, right? Makes sense. 